So we'd like to tell you about a paper we've just published in Current Biology, where we've combined live imaging with computational modelling to help us understand more about the pro-inflammatory signals that draw immune cells in our bodies to sites of damage. Now this work was a collaborative effort of two groups, Paul Martin's lab at the University of Bristol and the lab of Michael Stumpf at Imperial College London. So in the lab, we're interested in understanding exactly how our bodies are able to repair themselves when we become injured. When there is damage to our body, for example our skin, our bodies must act fast to repair and seal the wound. Cells of our innate immune systems are quickly drawn from elsewhere in the body, right into the wound area, where they perform important tasks, such as clearing up debris and fighting infection. At the moment, we don't understand exactly what the signals are that are released by the damaged tissue that are responsible for attracting the immune cells to this area. Genetic approaches in models such as the fly and fish have given us important clues to what these signals might be. For example, we know that ATP and hydrogen peroxide are important for immune cell recruitment to wounds, but it's currently unclear whether these signals are the real chemo attractants. As well as knowing the identity of these signals, we want to understand more about their behaviour. So where are they released from, how fast they move across the tissue, how far they spread and how long they persist. To help address these questions, we've come up with a novel approach, combining live imaging and mathematical modelling. Here we use the behaviour of the responding immune cells to characterise the nature of the wound attractant. So we've used the fruit fly Drosophila to live image the recruitment of immune cells into the wound in vivo at high spatial and temporal resolution. You can see as the wound closes, immune cells are rapidly recruited into the damaged area. By labelling the nuclei of the immune cells here in red, we can easily track their paths. We generated large numbers of these movies of both wounded and control tissue to give us lots of information about how the immune cells are being attracted into the wound site. All of this information about immune cell recruitment into the wound we then analyse using mathematical modelling, which allows us to extract information about the wound signal from the behaviour of these responding immune cells. For example, if you imagine when a wound is first made, it begins releasing an attractant signal which gradually spreads out away from the damaged area. Immune cells located closest to the wound will be the very first to sense this signal and respond by turning and moving towards the damage. As the signal spreads further out, it begins to reach immune cells that are located further away and these then respond by turning and moving towards the wound. This wave-like effect continues as the attractant signal continues to spread out and it reaches like cells located progressively further away from the wound site. Now this approach only works if we collect live imaging data for hundreds of immune cells and then we can use computational modelling to plot exactly how immune cell behaviour changes at different distances and different times post wounding. As you'd expect, cells located closest to the wound respond earliest and immune cells located progressively further away respond at successfully later and later time points. This wave in immune cell response to the wound with increasing distance and time we think reflects the diffusion of the attractant signal away from the wound site. Using this information we can simulate how the wound attractant spreads out from the wound site in space and time. In this way, our computational modelling approach has revealed information about the wound attractant that we couldn't have discovered from the biology alone. So we found that the wound attractant diffuses out from the wounded tissue quite slowly, at a rate of 200 micrometres squared per minute. This is probably too slow for the attractant to be a small molecule such as ATP and hydrogen peroxide. The signal measured in our study is probably a larger molecule such as a lipid or a protein. We've also found that the signal is only produced for 30 minutes post wounding and it is most likely to be released from the wound edge rather than the entire area of the damaged tissue. So we went on to model more complex wound scenarios such as the immune response to two competing wounds. We first wanted to validate the information about the attractant parameters from our single wound study 
And to do this, we took a predictive approach and used the single wound parameters to predict what would happen when two wounds were made at the same time. So we simulated how the attractant gradients from the two competing wounds made at different distances apart would overlap in space and time. Whilst two wounds close together would act as a single large wound and two wounds far apart would act as two completely separate wounds, the modelling predicted that two wounds made at exactly this distance of 330 micrometres apart would cause immune cell confusion in the interwound region as the two attractant gradients would overlap and cancel each other out. When we tested these different wound scenarios in vivo experimentally, the predictions held true and this helped to validate our single wound model. Perhaps more biologically interesting, we also modelled the effect of a second wound made not at the same time, but 90 minutes after the first wound. Surprisingly, when we tested this scenario experimentally in vivo, we found that the immune cells actually ignored the presence of the second wound. This suggests that exposure to the first wound has actually desensitised the immune cells to a second wound signal. Now this is an exciting discovery as it hints that the receptor for the wound attractant in this system could be a receptor like a G protein coupled receptor which are well known to undergo this temporary desensitization. Well thanks for listening, we hope you've enjoyed this short video introducing our recent study. Our full paper is now out in Current Biology if you want to read more about the approaches we've used and our findings in more detail. So we hope we've demonstrated what valuable insights can be gained from experimental imaging data if more sophisticated analysis tools are used. Although we've focused on the signals controlling the inflammatory response to tissue damage, this type of approach could be very useful for many other biological questions, especially those that are challenging for direct measurement or observation.